Hello and welcome back to the Season 5 Finals of the Wargaming.net League EU. And I'm Melly, and we're right here in my lovely social media corner. I just wanted to give you a quick update. I already announced it on Twitter um, that I'd spoken to Nico, our head of esports um, EU. And we have something very nice for you guys. I know how much you like the Type 59. And he agreed to give you guys another one if we reach a certain... Um, well, objective, let's say it that way. If we reach 7,500 views on, on our stream, he's willing to make one of you very, very, very happy. And um, yes, let's see how we can actually manage that. And I posted something um, on Facebook. So let's have a look together on my screen and I can show you through to make it like as easy as possible. As you see, this is our current challenge, which runs over two days, where you can participate and win one, one Type 59 and four Shermans and uh, 50 bonus codes. But that's not the post I'm talking about. It's this one. And as said, as already announced, there is another Type 59 for the grabs if we get that amount of viewer on our stream. And I need your help for this. Just share this announcement globally on your Facebook wall and tweet it out on Twitter and wherever else to get people on our stream because that's how you can get uh, this lovely tank because um, it will be given away amongst all participants um, in sharing this posting. So people, you know what to do. Head over to Facebook, follow us at WGLEU, of course, and uh, like our page and share this uh, announcement to get you a chance of winning another Type 59. So we have two types, Type 59s in the race, as I said, one in the overall contest, which is running over two days, where we want to see how you enjoy these Season 5 finals. And the other one is by simply telling your friends to watch our awesome, awesome final matches and um, by maybe reaching that number in our stream and it will be unlocked and then one of you will be very, very happy. And um, yes, of course, as said, the ch uh, contest with the um, how you hashtag WGLEU is already running and we have great, great submissions and well, if my Windows isn't broken, so now there you go. Pause, and I wanted to show you some of the submissions because I like them very, very much. And um, there are plenty of cool things in this picture. Of course, the wall-mounted uh, TV, which shows our program, and that T-shirt. I really want it, actually, like the MX-40. Knock, knock. Looks like a duck. So that's actually Killerpit 20, and he's um, greeting his friend Killerpit 19, which actually... Well, sadly, didn't make it to the next round. But Buddy will hear you, and he hears you as well. And this looks really, really comfy, if you ask me. I like the socks, and um, yeah, that's how that's how our casters enjoy <laughs> the the stream by sitting behind the desk and look at laughter, doing his prep, and keeping you. <sighs> posted with numbers during the cast. You two are doing amazing and the community really appreciates your work. Give a big hand to our casters. They're doing really, really well bringing you the games. And people, it's all about you. The next team vote is of course up and uh, we want you voting for your favorite team. And we'll talk about that result a bit later. We're heading into a short break of three minutes. Don't go anywhere. Maybe enough time to make a cup of tea or get something else to drink. And um, I'm turning more and more British. <laughs> so, people, we'll see you in three minutes. See you back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wargaming.net League EU Season 5 Finals. My name is Mitch Leslie, and I'm your host for this weekend. If you just joined us, and if you have, well, you missed out some awesome games, but there's plenty more to come. I'm here on stage with the captains, respectively, of Woosa and of School Bus, and we're going to talk to Sish first. Of course, you guys have made it through, obviously, this far. Not knocked out yet, of course, and you had a definitely impressive performance against Penta earlier on. Now tell me, you've had the chance to watch a lot of the games and see how this tournament has unfolded so far. Tell me, is there anything that has surprised you, or has it all gone as expected? My cousin against um, Penta was like way closer than I would expect it, but uh, cousin won, so that's the expected result. And um, yeah, also I wasn't sure about like who wins in between school bus and cousin, since I. I honestly think like Cousin is pretty strong, even if they like looked shaky in some games. But yeah, I don't know. Like now we got to play Scoobers. Let's see. Maybe like there's another upset incoming. Absolutely. Now, Arklit, you know we've we've harped on a bit. I want to. I don't want to keep mentioning it, but obviously you guys, you know, weren't as prepared as you would have liked to have been. It didn't really hurt you. Didn't stop you. You guys obviously were very strong performance in the first game of the day. <laughs> you get to this point of the tournament, you get to see how you know teams play. Is it possible to sort of adapt strategies on the day and change things up? Or are you guys just going to come in with um, a completely fresh mindset and just see how it goes? We did it with Kazna. We changed up uh, our tactics uh, if we couldn't uh, accomplish what we expected to do in the first place. Uh, I saw how Wusa play today. They play very aggressive and uh, they are not afraid to attack from the start. And... Uh, that's uh, pretty bold tactics, but uh, I think uh, we'll manage it. All right, well, strong words, not exactly fighting words, but the fight is still to come. Gentlemen, let's shake hands and have you join the rest of your teams, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Woosa going up against the school bus. This is a match that we've been looking forward to for most of the day, of course, one of our winner's bracket games. I can't wait to get stuck into it. And uh, don't forget, guys, 7.5K viewers and a Type 59. Wouldn't that be amazing? Not hard to get, I'm sure. You guys have been tuning in. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for those who are still here. It's a fantastic atmosphere here at the Sophia Event Centre. But now, let's break this game down bit by bit. Let's get the analysts' take on what they expect to see in this match. Luke, let's hear it. Thank you very much, Mitch. So, it's the winner's brackets. Wusa and Skubus undefeated today. These guys are coming up to the winners. They want to win this match to go forward to the next day on the winner's point of view. It's much better for them. But let's talk about it. Their performance before uh, this match. Wusa versus Skubus, head to head. What is, what's their strength and weaknesses? What have Wusa got going for them? This is actually interesting because both teams in the regular season were better in uh, defending than attacking. Now Wusa showed us that they have played really aggressive in the first game they played against uh, Penta. So they have changed a bit of their style from the re regular season to the offline finals. And uh, it, it will be interesting to see this both from the regular season defensive teams to class on now on the, on the offlines. Mojo, what's your point of view? I remember Wusa played really aggressive against Kulbas in the season and the match between them was all but decided. Uh, actually, Wusa had a big, big, unhappy uh, event there. One of their guys lost internet in crucial moment and died from the cliff in a water with 100% health when they were in lead. Then they almost came back six versus seven, almost one, and then another guy. <laughs> two, oh two in one word. game. That doesn't happen often. The game actually ended in Wusa winning five to four, but it could have been a clear win. A clear win. So online, Wusa beat School Bus. Yes. Interesting. Well, Wusa have seemed to be very strong uh, online, offline. Sorry, today. Uh, in fact, I would say their performance has been shockingly awesome. I think I just use the word awesome there because they were aggressive, fast, fun. Uh, I'm really liking their play style now. Uh, School Bus a bit shaky, we all thought, but they played really solid in their first game against Kansna. Uh, do you think they've picked up the pace? Yeah, for sure. School bus is always better at offlines than the regular season. And they were really, really shaky on the regular season. Now they were really dominating. So a complete change of, uh, of the playstyle and uh, how they're playing the game. So I'm, I'm happy for them. Any points on that, Mojo? Yeah, I would say School bus really showed some technical improvement here since the online, or online part, yes. Uh, and Vusa is only different. Like they're playing like they have no burden. I really like it. They're just going for it. They decide and we want to do it. Okay, so if you have to make a prediction, 
slight, heavy in any favor of either team. Wilkie? I'm going with 50-50. 50-50. You're really decisive today. Mojo? I'm going to favor for Wusa a bit. Ooh, how much? Uh, I'm too scared to go high, but like 55, 45. Okay, okay. So 55 towards Wusa. That's what we think. What about you guys there at home? What do they think? Well, it's pretty clear. 78% for school bus. So Ooh. that's a very strong number. People, if you haven't voted yet, head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and get involved. There, The first post on the wall is actually a contest. The second one as well. But after you work through both of those postings, which are really important, you get to the one where you can vote for your favorite team and predict the exact scoreline of this matchup. And if you do, do so, and you are one of the first, first 10 persons to guess right, well, you get a chance um, to win a bonus code, which contains uh, gold and premium days. And, uh, well, you asked Mojo if uh, school bus... Uh, well, Mojo said, sorry, that school bus improved during the offlines. Is it possible that they held back some tactics? No, I don't think they held back the tactics. It's just uh, they didn't prepare enough anything during that period. And now this is it. There is no more. They sat down together and said, OK, guys, we're going to do stuff now. <laughs> it's time to do the homework. OK, and if you guys have more questions, head over to Twitter and use the hashtag WGLEU. We have experts sitting here. And every question you've ever had about the game, about the matchups, about the teams, fight them straight away on Twitter, and I will get you your answers. Sounds like a plan, absolutely. Send the, um, any comment, any question at all about anything, even what's your favorite color. We are sure to answer it. Don't be scared. There is no stupid question. Well. Maybe the internet will disagree, but we won't judge. We won't judge. Anyway, let's go through the picking and banning. We actually know how the teams have already responded to each other. Who won the coin toss? Ah, coin toss won, won by a school bus. So Wusa did the first ban. And both teams actually banned the, their worst maps first. So Wusa banned Muravanka, and then school bus banned Ruinberg. After that, it got pretty interesting because Wusa actually banned their best map from the regular season, Prokhorovka. Wow. So, hold on. Mojo, why would they best, uh, ban their best map? I've, I've got a feeling I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. Change of the game pace. Wusa like to play 32s there, and now it's all about rotations with a lot of lights. I don't think they're maybe prepared for it now. So they decided to discard it because they cannot rely on always. The map has changed a lot, as we saw in the previous battle. It's much faster, and the T32s, we sort of worked once, but if they're heavily relying on that sort of tactic, they probably haven't had time to prepare a new strategy for it. Better just to get it out of the way. Probably a sensible uh, choice there. So those are the bands. What's the uh, map to be played on? The first map is going to be Himmelsdorf, where Wusa is defending first. And okay. From the statistics, Wusa is, has one more there in there. It's actually quite low. Wusa's win rate in Himmelsdorf is 55%, whereas School Buster's win rate is 51%. So it's, it's pretty close. That's, that's very close. Yeah, I, I think Mojo said earlier that the, that sort of percentage is almost ineligible. Statistics-wise, 3% or 4% in it is absolutely irrelevant. It's going to come down to their performance today. Yes, uh, Wusa likes the city map, so I think they can handle it. Actually, don't attack Himmel very well, but they have, if you watch those percents, 90% of defense. Like, I don't know anyone else who has it on any map in this league. So that goes for them. But School Bus is, as we've seen, inventive team. I just have to correct myself. Uh, just cause for Virtus approached me and actually showed me the clip. Uh, Nashorn from uh, Russian League actually used FV on exactly the same spot. Oh, so really? they are up to date. School bus is up to date. Okay, so th that is a uh, normal, n now a new normal tactic. Yeah, 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 now people will have to be aware of that. Okay, so uh, you at home, don't forget that if you are playing on Himmelstorf, there might be new tanks appearing in your uh, battles as well in that corner. That's a sneaky position, actually. Uh, there's many of those little moments where you've got to look out for those tanks hidden in really unusual positions. A lot of the good players just assume I'm safe here because no one can hit me. And then you get these interesting positions that open up a whole new can of worms where you, you're not safe anymore, where you thought you were safe. So uh, we've got Wusa attack, uh, defending first with their stre uh, strength. How do you think they're going to set up? Uh, Hoimustov is one map that you claimed earlier is very good at counter-attacking nowadays. Yes. You counter-attack down the 1-2 line, get around the rear. Are we going to expect to see that from Wusa? 
I think it will be smart for them to do it with a really focused play there, and then the game has to develop, and it will be all about rotations like on any other map. What do you think, Wilkie? Yeah, I'm actually agreeing with Mojo on this. Um, you need to control the first cap at this this moment that with this bad changes that happen. Okay, so we're expecting to see that happening from Wusa. What about the attack from Schoolboss? Very inventive, so let's uh, get rid of all the shackles of usual statistical play. What do you think Schoolboss can bring to the table that might be able to counter Wusa's very aggressive and, uh, well, I would say flux play? They're very able to uh, adjust so far. It seems that they're flowing really nicely. So what can Schoolboss do to maybe outmaneuver them? Well, there is a play with FVRT from the south also, and FV can be used for the cap. Also, they can play the open green field that we have in the center of the Himmelsdorf. They can try to force it, to force that angle, and then approach the south. There, there are actions and reactions for everything. It's just uh, who is better at recognizing what the enemy is doing and doing the faster reaction. I'm interested to see... I'm interested to see if these are actually the pickups in Object 416 and a T20 uh, for school bus. I'm not sure if that's their actual pick. I, I am absolutely sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was looking down, I was like, uh huh, yeah, um, object and, and T20, yeah, how's that going to uh, work? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's the case, it's not going to be working. Uh, why would the object 416, for example, not work? On because this as one, uh, it's a nice sniper, but it shoots heat shells. Now, if you, anyone who played randoms on Himmelsdorf knows, you have a lot of, uh, like, uh, borders like, uh, that you can't shoot through. They're obstacles. Heat shells do not penetrate anything. APCR can, so you can shoot it with IS-3 or uh, 5100, but 416, when it needs to snipe on distance, it's not a brawl tank, you cannot use it. Maybe you could just clear the obstacles with your smaller tanks? It uh, would take quite a while to do that. <laughs> there is actually quite a lot of uh, debris in Himmelsdorf. Uh, just uh, after Himmelsdorf, what's the second map? The uh, second map is going to be Cliff. It was picked by School Bus, and it's actually pretty interesting because Cliff has been the worst map of School Bus from the regular season, from the maps that they have played a lot. So only 36% win rate in there. But they picked it? They picked it. So they, will ha they must have something on their sleeve. What do you think, Mojo? I think as every dynamic team, they actually like to play Cliff. Cliff is a brawl map with uh, quick, quick, quick rotations. And uh, School Bus actually won their passage here on a cliff. They beat us in a deciding game. Oh, really? Yes. As we saw before, like one point decided who will go and who will not. And we had a huge brawl and we had a winning point in TCM, but they managed to win the last game equal and then win the tiebreaker. And it was a uh, Brawl of a game. You, you wouldn't know who was shooting who. So al school bus almost, literally to the last point, didn't get here. They slipped the hangman for like a straw. <laughs> wow. So they were against a match point and came back yes. and came here. Yes. That's determination for you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good uh, feat of a good team. It's a good feature for them because it was a dire moment, deciding moment for them for the entire season, but they kept their guts clear. Yeah, they were, they manned up. They manned up and they did. And we do know that the entire of School Bus's team are very experienced offline, or at least the core of them. I mean, arclet has been to almost every single offline event ever well, for World of Tanks. So. If they were here or in Russia, it doesn't matter. They've been everywhere. Exactly. So they've got a huge experience advantage, I would say, over Wusa, because a lot of the Wusa members are new. As we talked earlier, they did come second in China, but the team is basically completely different now. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how experienced their individual players are. Could you shed some light onto that? They are pretty good, actually. They like to highlight it, that they have a high individual skill level. So they, they have good players like FKK Schnitzel. She's really good at the tier 7, tier 6 tanks. But with offline experience? Uh, with offline yeah, sure. Uh, it's, they, they were in the WGL uh, World Finals in China. So they still have members from that team. So yeah, they have offline experience. They have also members in that... In Warsaw, you mean? Yeah, that was <laughs> in, in the you were there Finals. Host, both of you two yeah, were yeah, there. Yeah, but the before death. that, they were also in China. Yes, of course. But yeah. it's a completely different team. Only him remains from Schnitzel. China. Yeah. yeah. So from the grand finals, though, is it a more similar team to now? Yeah. 
So the grand final is what we expect. Uh, they didn't perform all that well, though, in the grand finals. They didn't do badly, but they didn't get out of the group phase on day one. Uh, unlike, unlike Lemming Train, who did push all the way through, but we've seen uh, Carmen go home with Penta today already. So that's uh, unfortunate for them. Uh, however, so uh, first map again was Himmelsdorf. So we want to see maybe you guys at home have already been tweeting in what you think is going to happen. As, has the voting actually changed their melee at all between the voting system on this map? Have, have they said? that one or the other, is it adjusted at all in the slightest over the last 10 minutes? And for school bus and, um, well, the community's kind of re recovered from their fails <laughs> in, in the previous matches, but uh, let's see how this one goes. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> if you know, <laughs> share your opinion with us by using the hashtag WGLEU. And it seems like we're heading into a quick break. Yeah, I think that's, uh, we're going to have to have some technical issues with uh, one of the computers. So we're going to quickly try and fix that. And we'll be right back with the first battle between School Bus and, uh, oh my God, I've forgotten their names. Wusa. Wusa. Yeah, Wusa. Wusa. I'm, I'm so chill, I've forgotten it. So, okay, Wusa versus School Bus coming up very shortly.
everyone, welcome back. Unfortunately, I don't have good news. We still have a broken computer, but we thought we'd better tell you anyway. I hope you're still getting involved with the vote. In fact, we're just extending the chance uh, for you to vote, really. Uh, make sure you get involved with the Type 59 uh, competition. So go to our Facebook and make sure all that is sorted out because you don't want to miss out on the chance for that tank that was removed a long time ago from the gold store and they're incredibly rare. So get, make sure you get involved in that. But as soon as the computer is fixed, we will be straight back into the winners uh, finals for today at Woosa versus School Bus coming up really soon. I'm so sorry about the delay, but we will not uh, be long. So the computer's going to be fixed soon, and we we'll right back.
música. Welcome back. We are almost ready. The computer is fixed and the players are getting ready. So very, very shortly, we will have School Bus versus Wusa. So this is a really important part of the day. These guys want to get through to the second day because that gives you at least uh, the top four position for points towards the grand finals. So these guys who will be going through to the next day will be getting either uh, 12 points, uh, 11 points, 10 points, or nine points, depending on where they get to, to go through to the grand finals. And I think at the moment, it's really close for Virtus Pro and Scoobus because they obviously did first place and second place in the last season. But uh, as far as I'm aware, these teams are actually a little bit jumbled and School Bus really needs to get through to the second day. They do not want to go out today. So they're going to be fighting hard. Yeah, and there's one thing as well that the winner of this match goes to play against GG World Play tomorrow and not Virtus Pro. Interesting. And we've heard that people think that GG World Play actually might be the stronger team right now. Yeah. 
There has been we talk about that. We don't know actually is that a benefit or a exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so will they deliberately lose? Is, this is we're going to start the conspiracy theory here right now. I think we're going to be going like, okay, so one of them is going to deliberately lose right now. Right. So if, if no matter what happens, the team that lose didn't actually lose. They just deliberately and lost. And go to play to Kazna for free. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your faith in Kazna is restored and with the uh, struggling they've been doing. I actually met Runzi in the corridor just outside, and he was saying how upset he is at himself. He's like, I know I'm not playing well. He's a I, German. I, he's I, perfectionist. I really want to play better. I, I know that I'm not just pulling my weight. I need to play better. So uh, Kazna really know, and they're focusing on their mistakes. They're trying to. Um, recover they're trying to get better but at the moment uh, it's all for nothing but as you said like whoever loses here does go against Kazan if they win they will go forward to play Virtus Pro which you know is that a benefit or a curse uh, I'm not entirely sure well Virtus Pro hasn't lost a single game on this season so well of course they're not going to be a walkover yeah. no one's saying that but a lot of people are saying that GGWP just might be that stronger team I'm I'm not convinced of I'm not uh, particularly well versed with GGWP compared to Virtus Pro I've seen them a lot more. well I talked with Kusak yesterday and he's pretty much said that the match the first match tomorrow is just going to be a step until they face GG well played Oh, so it's 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 Virtus Pro already knows that it don't, doesn't matter who comes through. We're gonna be playing GG well played, but that is that is Virtus Pro's thing. It's it's just always been their thing. They're being very very confident, regardless. And I I've th seen them lose because of this. Yeah, but you need the confidence. Indeed, they do. But we'll see them tomorrow. But right now, School Bus is ready, and so is Wusa. So it's time to go over to your casters, Lauren and Ollie. Take it away, guys. Thank you so much, and once again, uh, we cannot wait for this one. Uh, a bit of an astounding game coming up between these two, I think. Uh, hopefully, all issues are resolved <laughs> with, with School Bus. There were a couple of setup problems, but that's the thing. We don't want to rush these guys too much because this is the offline finals. This is where it all comes down to, and you don't want to be constantly keeping that thing in mind. If there was like a little issue holding you back, you don't want them to have that being the main problem. So we gave them some time, and hopefully they are now prepared. But on paper, where are you putting your money on this one? Well, School Bus hasn't been too good um, in the online mm. stage on Cliff, but they did well against um, Wusa, so, um, not against Wusa, against uh, Kazna, so <laughs> uh, they have a good start at least. Um, we'll have to see how it goes through, of course. Um, a little bit of strong play by Wusa could just slide it into their favor again, so this is going to go back and forth and be a very close game. Um, but first map, Himmelsdorf, um, theoretically it should be 2-2. I think, of course, the attack is slightly easier now with the changes, but I think it's going to be decided on Cliff. I think it's all going to be decided on Cliff. If it's a 3-1 or if it's a 2-2, I think it's going to come down to that second map. But still, a team could get a little bit of an advantage here in terms of at least confidence. Yep. And that could also uh, swing it into whichever team does get that. So it's going to be a close match. See, and the thing is, I can never underestimate School Bus on Hillsdorf. I think they are a great side in this. And what are we actually seeing coming out from these guys? That's a slightly adjusted lineup there. But we'll have to see if that comes into effect. So in the north, it will be Wusa on the defense first. And School Bus on the attack. Now, School Bus do have a good record here. I've always enjoyed the way they play this. But this is the slight difference. This is the slight change we saw coming into effect towards the later half of the season, especially online. This kind of presence down that western side from the defending team. Yeah, clearly Wusa um, saw how strong School Bus were on the defensive side and they decided to pick up the attack, uh, the defensive side themselves first, but uh, we haven't seen School Bus attacking. They got an AMX 12T, we've um, you know seen that not so much in the online season, we haven't seen it at all, but it's a fast, it does a lot of damage. Um, it's a good tier 6 tank all around, but um, you know it's not, a, it's not a tier 37 um but it's got an autoloader, so it's kind of cool. I guess it's just the matchup between the T37's autoloader and the AMX-12T's autoloader. And of course, the 12T, the French tank, came up above. So, interesting start. Obviously, want to go towards the left side. You can see Wooster's trying to counter that move into the first cat by putting a lot of tanks towards the left side. They got an AMX-5100, T37, and that 5100 is heading up north. And I think... School Bus will just be trying to encroach on that Western cap as much as possible. And if that doesn't work out, push the tanks in towards the middle and go for cap number two. Well, very early on, Siege has taken a lot of damage there. So down to 252 HP could, could be considered a weak point, but he is only in that T37. So he can be taken down, but it's always good to have those kind of uh, guns in the game, regardless of the size. Narclet looking like just about makes it into cover there for Siege. But still, we are seeing a very cautious school bus here. Yeah, they're not really wanting to go forward. I think Arklet wanted to make his way into 
G4 because he wanted to snipe the D3 area where the IS-3 is, but he couldn't get there. He got spotted out. You can see the 5100 rotating off the hill slightly, so it looks like School Bus isn't going to be going for the cap number two because of presence. It's all there, but Apple getting the higher ground finds Siege there, so Team Captain from Woosa going down in the T37. Not a massive deal, but still a little bit of a pain, and to be honest, Siege did put himself in that awkward situation, so he's only got himself to blame. Yeah, so first tank down there for Woosa, but still very slow start between these two and you can see the kind of gravity of the situation here every single round really does count and we've been quite patient which needs to find dead hunter a good little shot there but still dead hunter staying alive and as you said uh, a play we don't often see but what do we make of this is 5100 split here? well dead hunter's dead because he didn't realize that um fkk it saw spoink was there and he's also got tanks to his right but these this armory arclet play is a little bit interesting um the kind of c D, 3, 4 areas are a lot more common to put tanks there because you can push around, but they've seen that Stefan is in a bad position and they know that AMX 5100 and J1 can also be cornered out, so maybe they want to do some damage to that and kind of keep it uh, locked down with that AMX 12T if they can. they got the 5100 being very aggressive up north, that's Shanish to his right. I believe that's Apal coming off the hill as well, so um, I think Schoolbuster can do what Kazna did. They're kind of going for that uh, 3, 4 area push and um, hope that it works out. But it's a hard thing to play as Dead Hunter just go for. I said he was dead in the MX-12T, yep. he will fall. And that'll be a one-for-one one exchange in terms of tier six. It's not a big deal as school bus do start to position themselves for that first attack. It's certainly on. Uh, they, they could have a good overmatch here. There's a 5100 still fairly down far in the south. One towards the western side cap. They can do some serious damage and get away with it to a degree. Apple House going straight in on this. He's not messing around at all. The Annihilator is there to back him up, but Apple House just going to be holding back Vatillion, and those shells are going to come in thick and fast. There's nothing he can do about this. As Shanish is a one shot, but ooh, ooh misses it up there, and Vatillion stays alive. Apple House doesn't expect it. Tara has to turn, gets tracked, gets held, takes him down, but a one for one exchange. Not as clean as Schoolbus would have wanted. That was messy stuff there. Definitely a big mistake from Chani. He had to penetrate that second round, but he was holed down against a T32, so it didn't go well. A little bit of very extension from Rufy, mm -hmm. but the IS3 does bounce. Armley and Arklet now joining in with those two IS3s of themselves. You got the 5100 in the middle, but it's too late to the party, so the overmatch will come up. But Woos is ready and waiting around the corner. Yeah, they have to find a way into this one. Arklet does take down Rufy, receiving maybe one or two shells off the back of it, but can they really pull this into a win? There's still that 5100 in the south, but Schpoint taking a lot. There's a lot of damage being received here for Wu, so they're down to 4.4k. Schoolbus 4.3, so it's still very close, but it looks like Schoolbus want to push out here. Yeah, Schoolbus are just going forward. They want to take down Spoink. Stefan's now a one-shot as well, but near Pizzorni is in such a great position that he's going to be able to do a chunk of damage. FKK Schnitzel is going to have to try and protect Spoink and Stefan with that 5100 and Schoolbus don't realize he's there. Yeah, two shots back to back doing the damage, but after they find Spoink, so still these guys staying together just purely by the amount of them in one area, but they're so low. Near Pizzorni comes in, gets one. Applewell down, has to wait on the shell and they look like they want to go back in and find more, but Stefan shell ready and waiting, finds Nuclear. Arklet again, Arklet's on a roll, but sadly he is the only one really able to do this at the moment and the HP is so low for Schoolbus and Another shell, Armley Ooh. taking a lot of damage here. Arklet has a shell to make. Can he find the shot? Yes, he can. Arklet single-handedly doing wonders for School Bus. That second bounce on Arklet was critical, and Armley will step up for his team and get that final frag as uh, School Bus do amazingly win one round of an attack on Himmelsdorf. And uh, impressive stuff considering Wooter has got the best record of all teams with 90% win ratio on the defensive side. But it was just the individual play. Schoolbus didn't bounce anything, and a couple of bounces came up from Wusa, and that gave them the overmatch they needed. It was down to so little HP then at the end. Every single heavy tank was down to nothing. So, as you said, the small shots hitting here, there, and everywhere making the big difference. And I've got to say, Arklet's performance was great. Hitting the shells that mm -hmm. did matter in the end. I'd love to see how many kills he actually got. Um, at the end of that one, because it was certainly very impressive. However, overall, I think that was probably the, the most close game we've seen in the way it played out in the, in the skill level of the back and forth and who had the upper hand where, and it wasn't like an all-in rush or a, you know all-in play. It was quite calculated, and it looked like School Bus knew what they wanted to do with that one. Yeah, they definitely did. I'm just surprised that they won that one. Um, I really am. After Vitalin did a great job in that T32 of taking down Shanish, one of the better players yes, for School Bus, yeah. 
um, I thought it was, it was it was all over because the the amount of damage that uh, Wusa did at the beginning was was fantastic. But um, I think they made a couple of mistakes. FK Schnitzel was just expecting one of the players from School Bus mm -hmm. to rotate around the middle rope, but it didn't happen, which meant that FK Schnitzel was out of the fight for a long time, which gave School Bus that one tank advantage they needed to win that. But I think FKK could have done two things either just join the fight earlier on like he did you know along with his other tanks mm. or just rotate around the back and just do six shells into the back of school bus find a tank or just hit all the tanks to bring them down to one shots of course i think school bus would have turned around and just killed him but he was still unloaded about 1.8k damage so mistakes from musa all around definitely the nerves getting bet uh, getting the better of them but um school bus just look on point they look good and uh, an attacking round on Himmelsdorf is, is nothing to kind of um, mm. sneer at because no, definitely. it's only happened 33% of the time. It's a very big pickup. And to be fair, School Bus looked like maybe they could pull it off again. It, I, I don't want to put it past them. School Bus on this map, I don't know what it is with me, but I always enjoy the way they play on it. I can never underestimate them when it comes to Himmelsdorf. They seem such a champion in the previous series on it and in the previous game modes that when they finally got towards this sort of point, and they got towards uh, this season. They finally stepped up and really found some form in it. People did counter, but once again, they did find ways to adapt and overcome. Whether it was with the artillery on attack or defense, they always seem to have a couple of tricks up their sleeve. On the other side, though, I wouldn't have expected Wusa to get here if you asked me last season, to be fair. I think uh, I'd, I'd probably be very surprised if they had, but they've been a team of real surprises throughout this, and I'm hoping we can see that <laughs> reciprocated now because a bit of a shaky start in this one, but then again, when you're on the defending side in the first round, you're just kind of waiting to see what the opposition brings. So you're a little bit cold to the start. Mm. I think that maybe they'll be a bit more warmed up here and maybe a little bit more willing to make the challenges. Yeah, and I think that left side cap is is where it's all going to go down. Woos obviously cancels it out at the beginning. I think they're going to do the same. Mm. Um, Dead Hunter, obviously, in the AMX 12T will be expecting it this time. So let's see how the bluffs go between these two teams. Woosa may just um, do something completely unexpected, but I'm not sure. They, they're an aggressive team, but they're not overly aggressive. They've been pretty calculated so far. <laughs> they haven't done what Penta did, um, you know, just commit with one tank, and then the, all the other tanks behind them have to commit, otherwise it's Look a certain, loose, certain <laughs> loss. But Rufi is playing the FV304, the only British tank I would have to say sported in um, e in eSports, which is very unfortunate, I think, but yeah, I um, we'll, we'll get that change at some point. Size doesn't matter, you know. No, but it, it wins battles, to be fair, and that's more it than does. can be said for a lot of tanks. So um, FV304 still being used, but uh, not in that B1 area we saw. Um, um, oh, Arklet yeah. use it, but I think they're predicting that if they let that left side cap, the, the cap number one alone, that um, School Bus will take the bait and just go for it, and then they can use the FE to reset, and then School Bus is going to have to rotate, but it's going to be too late. Yeah, it's, it's actually a nice touch to kind of have that in play, so kind of calling the bluff almost of Arklet, who's, who's certainly playing that, and... Uh We'll have to wait and see what School Bus can kind of find a way through. Will they fall for the trap? You can see Dead Hunter even shooting towards the direction of where Arkit previously played that tank, towards the northwest. So certainly something in mind there, but they seem cautious, School Bus, and maybe it's a little bit too obvious, and maybe they're thinking, okay, what are they up to here? Yeah, they're not going to take the bait. They're not a stupid team. But then uh, School Bus is not always the most tactical team in the world. I no, don't really? think they're a thinking man's team. <laughs> They've just got brilliant players. Apart from Armelie, all the guys that play the main battle tanks have probably about 7k average damage um, obviously nuclear hitting that 8.7k so school bus is a team that relies on skill and that's why they've won rumble in the west that's why they won season four because yep. they just went in an all um an all in situation and then just won the whole firefight like they did in that previous round against wusa yeah. it's just an overmatch in skill and, and no bounces came out but I don't know. I think it's also a weakness. I think School Bus should think about things a little bit more um, because it would make them an unbeatable team um, all around. But Apple Arklet looking for that uh, ED area. you got the AMX 12T spotted, so they know um, the T32 of Vitalin, who's been playing fantastically this finals, is ready and waiting. And then Dead Hunter's also a one shot, so he can't peek. Yeah, he certainly can't now. Nip is only actually taking a little bit then. And I just wanted to see if School Bus fall for it. If they 
you know, really do go for it. Because considering how many shots Arklet was making by this point, if you, you know, the amount of spots they've gotten on, Arklet was constantly making shells. Whether or not they connected was a different matter. However, surely Scorbus are now going, well, he's not really making shots. There's nothing coming from that direction. Where is he? So I, I'd be very surprised if they just went straight in for that cap. But at the moment, what's it look like they're actually building up towards? Well, they want to go on an, another one versus one situation. Mm. They want another brawl. Um, they're going to have a hard time because uh, Stefan in the IS3 is side scraping in A3. Um, but they can see that Wusa doesn't have um, an extra combat tank. They have an FV. So they know that they're going to be able to get the decap and they know that they don't have a, a T37 or mm. whatever M6 or an MX12T. Um, so when it comes to the brawl, yes, it won't, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but the FE is going to do no damage pretty much. So um, Skua should theoretically win in terms of the maths. Apo Arklit creeping forward. They're looking for another shell onto Nia Pizzoni. But Nia Pizzoni is not a man that a lot of people get the better of. I think he's actually probably the best player from Rusa and a guy that certainly carried Rusa kicking and screaming through this finals. 357, but he does reply a bit of his own. FKK Schnitzel trying to do some there as Nuclear does come into the equation, but FKK is certainly not a good play there. No, a lot of damage received for very little gain from Wusa and already the Annihilator and Shanish starting to look towards more of the center of this map down that five line. The IS-3s sticking to the three. We're finally seeing that FE making a couple of shots. So I think Skullbus should be aware of roughly where it may be positioned. But what is the end game here? Are they going to try and make something similar to the previous attack or something very different? Well, they can be very happy with the initial damage they did. They can be happy that FKK is down to half HP because he's going to AMX 5100, just focus him out, take him down. So at some point, Schoolbus is going to go for an attack. You've got the 5100s in a good position. Armory and Nuclear are going to go forwards. Nuclear in a great position. They'll hold down in the IS-3. And it's only a matter of time before they go forwards. The FE-304 is getting into the game a little bit. Stefan on the cross does find Arklet, so overmatch not so big anymore. And that's going to be their biggest problem, Stefan. Or do they go for Schnitzel? Well, it is that 4-2 split right now, and the IS-3 is moving in, but the 5100 is from the backside. Going to finally make their appearance. Look at that damage going towards Wusa. They're going to have to commit towards those ISs. Apple and Nuclear, and Shanish will find that corner. He's going to look for it. They are picking up kills. Arkley goes down. And those 5100s need to get into the fight right about now because the rest of School Bus are getting beaten black and blue. Schnitzel takes one, but goes down eventually. And actually, Wusa are putting up a good fight here and actually enough to maybe keep them in this one. Shanish on the cross gets a lot, but gives a little back. Whereas the rest of his team down to a one shot now does not have the shells to make. And now just three alive for School Bus. Can they salvage something from this? It's three versus three, though. Thanks for good work by Apo and Siege might actually fall, but Apo on reload, so is the Annihilator. Now it's a problem. Can Wusa get into this game quick enough? Now um, the autoloaders of School Bus are reloading, and, well, Apo not in a great position for Thailand. It's certainly in a good one, so it's going to be one versus one. You've got the rotate coming around, but the MX-12T is just not going to be able to provide that damage oh they need. Oh my god, Siege still stays alive. He's on 29 HP, I think. Finally, Applewound goes down, but it's down to the Annihilator and Dead Hunter. They have one minute, or just under, to find these three remaining tanks and deal that damage. Now, Dead Hunter can't really do much to that effect in that sort of tank, but the Annihilator certainly can. However, he needs to find all these tanks, withstand all that damage take him down. But you can, you can easily do it. He I mean, 1.8k from the SO47, he can just solo those two, two, uh, that T32 and the IS-3, especially because Battalion's not expecting it. But can he get this done quick enough? 32 seconds, two shells now coming in, one more will seal the deal for Battalion at least. Now two more to find. Siege waits for the shell. Annihilator turns turret, waits for it, gets it. Now 1v1 here between Stefan. Dead Hunter knows he's got to be cautious, he can't let Annihilator down, 14 seconds. I don't think they can make it to Stefan in time. I think that maybe Stefan's played this correctly, finds his bit of cover. Six seconds left. This could be one to one, three seconds. I don't think there's time on this. And well, the Annihilator knows it. No time left. Wusa picks up round number two. Yeah, close game. Uh, at the end of the day, Wusa um, made a few mistakes and uh, Annihilator did a great job at the end. But the thing is, he didn't get the roles he needed. And despite taking down two tanks, fantastic shot onto Siege as well. Stefan had 692 hit points, so uh, 300 average, two of them 600. It just wasn't enough damage, and the MX-12T played by Denta, Dead Hunter just not in a good position. I'm not sure why he was there for so long. Mm. He should have pushed up into the cap at least and try and made something happen as soon as those T-32s went down. Just bad coordination from uh, Schoolboss in that round, but... 
Yeah, that was that was a nail biter. That was really close for Wusa. And if they had lost two attacking rounds, mm. it would have been disastrous. But still, Schoolbus are in the lead. They've won one attack, and it would mean that Schoolbus do need to be winning one of these two next rounds to be able to stay in this game. Yeah, one to one so far. Your opinion on both performances? Who are you favouring to this point? Anyone, anyone standing out, or not really just yet? Well, Schoolbus almost won two attacking rounds. They just look better. They look more composed. They made a few mistakes in that last round, but winning. Almost winning two attacking rounds is something that we don't see a lot of, so mm. for me it's definitely school bus. So Dorjan, what do you make of those attack insides from school bus? Are they up to scratch? Well, it's one of those things. Himmel stuff I find incredibly hard to defend, so I'm actually siding with that Wusa's individual fighting skill is doing well, although Snitzel seems to be out of position quite a bit. Uh, he seems to do some clever stuff, but Mojo pointed out quite a few times he loses his HP for no good reason. Well, uh, he came to help in first game his teammates, but uh, he had a really good intention. He did a good cross shot to track one guy that was attacking, and then he overstayed his welcome and took like 1,000 damage back from my trees. That was a pretty much deciding moment in that game. Uh, Vusa was back to the wall in that moment. We must understand that. If FKK didn't come that there, those other trees would die 100%, and all go good work there. T32 did before, and Nipozorni holding his ground did that will all go to waste. I just think that uh, one half of the second that he stayed too long really costed them the game because he stood at peaks above ice trees and he simply was an easiest target. And the, the most favorable target at 5100 fresh coming in is the absolute top priority for anybody who knows how to shell count. He has six shells, they know it, he fires one, take him out. Uh, obviously, if he'd already fired five times, you leave him alone, let deal with the IS-3s, and then deal with him later. But uh, it was a bit uh, hit and miss. Uh, Wusa, now as um, Oliver was going through, it's, it's almost like a, they say in tennis. You get the advantage if you lose your serve, that's when you're in trouble. You can be one game down, it doesn't matter, as long as you're winning your serves. And it, f it feels like the defense is your serve. So for anyone out there who prefers tennis, that, that should clear up the way it works. So. Yeah, it feels like we said really did lose their serve. Yeah, they're, they're definitely a problem. Uh, defense is actually their stronger side on uh, Himmelsdorf. Now they have to attack twice. Skullbus knows to play Himmelsdorf really well. So Wusa will have to come up with something new to beat them. Okay. They played aggressive on other maps, so... Let's yeah, they're, they're, they're doing well, I hope so. But Wilkie, what's your opinion on this? Well, I, I'm also going with the Skullbus because we saw it in there. Skullbus were better in the fight coordination in those clutch moments, like in the in the moment where Nipo played pretty good, Snitzel lost all his HP, the, all the IS-4s, uh, for IS-3s from uh, School Bus, just shared the HP, came to shoot at the same time, so they shared the firepower, shared the HP, whereas uh, Wusa's tanks were coming like one by one. But during the brawl in the second game, Wusa's focus fire was actually better. They actually were knocking out guns much, much faster, wouldn't you agree? Uh, they did set up a really good crossfire and made a good judgment call. When they saw those tanks coming from the other side, uh, they decided to push forward immediately. That's a good team decision. And they did a really good focus fire, and you could see school bus tanks falling and falling and falling. They had a little blunder with the 32 at the end. They didn't see the 50 coming, but that's about it. They still had enough HP to survive. As you saw, Stefan took no risk, survived. That's his goal as a defender, survive, and that's it. So that's it. Wusa on the attack. Can they keep it going? They're down one advantage game. It's one all at the moment. Can Wusa do it on the attack or is School Bus going to hold firm in their defense? Let's find out. Go to Lauren and Oliver to find it. I'm sure we're going to find out very soon exactly the answer to those sort of questions. But it is a, a bit of a sticking point now. Can Wusa do what Schoolbus did, just did by picking up one of the attacking rounds? It is quite difficult, I feel, on this map. Mm. And we know that Schoolbus can defend this. They came into this season with some brand new tactics, a new way of playing it, picking up several tanks that we hadn't seen previously really tried out in various forms. And it, it worked for a while, and then others caught up and found their own way of doing things. And Wusa is one of those teams, so it's kind of like the old guard against the new in a way mm. when it comes to this map, at least. But I don't know what to make of this one so far. I think there's still a lot to be seen between these two, as it is time to get in towards the game. But your prediction, if we're going to put it down to the sides, are we going to call the end result, at least on this one? I think Woos has been a lot better on the attack in general. Um, and this finals in the online stage, definitely a better defending team and definitely a better slower team. But yeah. Woos has been making great judgment calls, attacking over and over again. 
We saw it when they played against um, Penta. So for me, I think Roos is going to be a, a, a good attacker on Himmelsdorf regardless, and I think they will be able to pick up one of the next two rounds. I think if they have to pick up, if I would choose a round they have to pick up, I would say it's the second one because hmm. um, they can kind of test the waters against Schoolbus. Does Schoolbus go for that one or two line push? Where they're they going to do what they're going to do? But um, the, the lineups, four IS3s, 251 line just suggest to me straight away that they're going to end up in the CD area and kind of go for peaks around there just as Schoolbus did, just as um, we saw when they played against, uh, when we saw Kazna play against Penton earlier around. Um, no, not against Kazna, when we saw them play against Schoolbus, when Kazna played Schoolbus in the earlier round. So, um, these are kind of options we have. I'm pretty surprised we haven't seen any zero line push, A1 to A0, because... It became a thing in the end it of was, the season. It was definitely a big thing. Um, I guess it's because most teams are kind of thinking, okay, so base one's now an option, whereas it definitely wasn't in the past. But still, no, no bore six. We haven't seen no bore six with no 12.8 or 15 centimeters. And... I guess that is just because of the A, the changes to the map, and B, changes to the tank. Mojo mentioned it. A big nerf to the um, camo value of that Borsig makes it very hard for it to get into these A9, A8 areas and shoot without being spotted. It'll get spotted now. So that's probably why these two teams aren't using it. But you can see the IS3s all making their way to that CD area and uh, probably want to be going for some sort of uh, side scraper. You can see the IS-3 as well in H1. Um, I think the T-37 will head into the cap as well. 5100 on the hill to provide good cover fire. And uh, you can see, well, Neopazorni does receive one, but he has to kind of deal with it. He does head across. Second one does bounce and Armley on reload, so you won't find out. So far, Stefan moving up into position. Takes one on the way, as you said. Sometimes you have to take a couple of shells to get into certain positions. It's always going to be a factor. However, it looks quite similar in, in a way almost to what we saw coming out from School Bus. It's, it's, it's a fairly similar way to attack it, but Stefan now taking a little bit more damage than maybe he'd have wanted here. Stefan just getting blind shot by Arkley. is the guy who can really hit these blind shots. Yeah. Um, I don't think Arkley can shoot her all the way around the corner. Yes, he can. He is just so unbelievably good. Stefan's not spotted. You can't see that light bulb in the top left-hand corner. Still hitting it. It's still hitting those shells. He's still guessing correctly. It's just Arklet's intuition. That's the skill with artillery. Intuition and prediction. It's not hitting the button at the right time. It's it's knowing where to shoot and when to shoot. And Stefan's now in a position where he doesn't want to be. And Arklet still finding those shells. He's basically just shooting behind that building. He's seeing that the shell is hitting the ground, not hitting a tank. So he's trying another place. And uh, if the shell disappears and he knows hit something if it hits the ground and makes a crater he knows he hasn't so those are the kind of skills you need as a player and that's what makes Arklet so much better than everyone else in that role yeah showing some extraordinary talent um playing it in somewhat the same, same position as we saw the prior side but certainly to a very different effect and uh, a very different degree of talent three minutes left what sort of time are we looking at for Wooster to really make a play out of this well, they should just push now. They've got Dead Hunter to deal with, who, to be honest, hasn't really played an IS-3 throughout this season. So I'm not sure what his performance is going to be like. It's not a hard task. He just hits, has to hit those shells. But Apoil making a couple of mistakes, trying to side scrape, but two great shots onto the top of that IS-3. It's a weak point for that tank and all Russian tanks to secure Wooster a little bit of a comeback from that early damage by Armelie and Arkley onto Stefan who at the moment is out of the game. So Woos is going to push forwards. Efficationist Schnitzels is just coming in. So once he does come, Woos is going to make that first move against Dead Hunter, Apoan, and, and the Annihilator. Yeah, and once again, those shells getting so close from our clip, but not quite connecting. And the camp has begun, so he's going to have to keep his attention towards that. Well, Squirrel is going to have to start considering maybe having to commit towards this more than just our clip making those shots. Otherwise... That hook is going to get a little close for comfort. And I like this play from Wooster, though. We can get into our own hands, and this is what we're talking about. Arklet making those sort of shots. But that's so obvious. I mean, he shot forward, he shot back, and then he shot in the middle. You know, that's the three choices he had. And Siege kind of called his bluff, and it didn't work out too well. So, you know, Arklet just hit the shell. It was logical stuff, and Siege just didn't predict it. And it's going to force Wooster to go forwards because they know they can't cap anymore with one minute and 50 seconds. So the push is going to come out and Dead Hunter is going to be that target. 
See if he can make it count. Dead Hunter does take one, but just be careful. He can't outstay his welcome. There's not really that much fire coming from the side. He stayed too long. Spoink takes him down, and that's a huge opening for Wusa now. Yeah, as uh, Shanish is receiving a lot of damage from the side as well. Shanish might fall to the left. Armely just trying to come into support. He's actually out of the equation. You can see Stefan makes his way up and towards A1. B1 area and FKK Schnitz on the side. Mike just find himself in trouble as Nuclear and the Annihilate position themselves. And they're going to have to try and find a way to get themselves even up in this. Look at this fold coming from Wusa. Pressure on the one line, the four and the six, all looking for this now as Schnitzel will go down. But look at this two for one exchange. It's all going Wusa's way, but apart from the HP, Scuba still maintain that. For how long? Nuclear finds one, Armley gets another, and it's back. Looking like Scuba's have this in the bag, but for a minute there, they have to get these tanks down and out. Oh, this could still change around. Well, Spoink's actually on reload. That IS-3 of Italian missing that shell actually does it. He goes for the Annihilator. Annihilator just running with a tail between his legs. He's always the guy running for some reason. But still three versus three. Armley, though, has 100% HP, but two versus one. Rufi trying to get the cross. And the I think Spoink's just well. in, a, in a bad position because, well, an army can just take him out. But I guess he wants to play it safe. He wants to stay back. Yeah, time is of the essence. 30 seconds remain. Two tanks take down in the north, and look where the Annihilator is going to be off to. He is down in the south, I think, getting out of this one. Nuclear just taking his time, trying to stay alive as much as possible. Armley found Rufi. So this is pretty much over for Rusa. And oh my god, that doesn't help. Ooh, that's a good shot, shot though. I mean, two tanks go down. Spoink doesn't have time, though, to find Armley or the Annihilator. Definitely not. So it's going to be game over. Um, first defensive round, very closely going to school bus. But, you know, Wusa showed some flair. They showed some dynamicism. And I think they can be pretty happy with that first round. They just have to step it up a little bit extra next time round. I don't know. It's, it, that little bit extra is, is what it takes to win these maps. And sometimes it seems that... <laughs> I don't know how, but school bus are able to always have that little bit extra at times. And I want to see if they can do it again, though. There's one more go on this map until we find out really that ending scoreline. And I, I, th I feel it's going to have to be like a two to two if these guys keep going like the way they are. It's mm. constant back and forward, small adaptions here and there that seem to make all the difference down the line. And I don't know, for me, Wooster's performance has been good, but it's just that final decisive move. They, I don't know, it just didn't seem to have the real punch to it that I was hoping it would. Yeah, I think they should have, um, well, the biggest problem was that Stefan received about 60% of his hit points off. Yeah. I mean, Arklet's shells, he hit three, wasn't a big deal. And then the problem came when Siege got hit by Arklet unnecessarily, just because he guessed wrong. But he should have been thinking logically. But Arklet is just unbelievable. He's on another level, and he's using that FE's reload to its best effect. Um, but still, I'm not sure if the cap would have really worked because Stefan was on such low hit points. All Army would have had to do is take down Stefan and then move on to C. So Cap was probably out of the equation in general. Um, and then, uh, you know, Stefan probably wanted to be along with his other teammates pushing that CD area. But um, I think Wusa came pretty close. I mean, it was uh, a two-on-one situation. Armley, though, on 100% hit points, not great. But Spoink had the AMX 5100. He could have taken him down in one clip um, if he didn't bounce any shells. So it was pretty close, um, kind of as close as it was in that last defending round by Wusa. So I think they still got a chance. Um, but uh, School Bus definitely are stronger on the attack. Uh, we have to see what Wusa really has um, in store for us in this uh, second attacking round. Yeah, they're going to have to come up with something decent here. I want to see it. They, they, as you said, they did look close. They looked like they were so close to making it work, but then it just kind of slightly fell apart. However, as you said, two goes on this. And you, you theorized it was going to be the second one that they won out of the two attacks, mm. correct? So in theory, it's still on for that. Your prediction could still be correct. Do not worry, Ollie. You'll be right one of these times. <laughs> Your predictions Maybe. have been substantially better this event than normally online. So Really? Yeah, I think so. I think my predictions online have been pretty good. No, they're horrific. Yeah. yeah. I reckon about 90, 95% <laughs> in that area, somewhere around there. No? <laughs> Ooh, close enough. At least I predict. I mean, you got the guys <laughs> on the desk saying 50-50. I mean, come on. Yeah, that, I put that my is money on the line. Atrocious. I know that, that is appalling. The thing like, is, I'm why do we hire these analysis if they're going to give us that? I'm not know? sure if I do it because I want to do it or because every time I don't do it, you just put me on the spot and I have to do it anyway. So I've just kind of learned my lesson Can't there. Can't you fall under pressure? What's, what's wrong? Um, you okay? well, exactly, there we go. That's exactly <laughs> what you do. So I've, I've learned my lesson early. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But no, I think 50-50, yeah, there is logic to the 50-50. Well, of course there's logic to the 50-50. but Stop being mean. <laughs> like 50-50, GG, I mean. Uh, you, you've got to, I got to, I, I kind of, 
I wouldn't agree with it because I'm biased, you know, to school bus, but... <laughs> oh, Apple, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. As if you wouldn't be, you know, biased to Apple. Wow. He's no, adorable. Look he at is. the guy. But, Pow, you know... Wow, wow. <laughs> I was really sad that wasn't in the video this time. He should have done that. He should have, like... Stepped up his pow wow wow it to another level. Been, yeah, it should be in like another level one. Just add like another wow or pow in there somewhere. <laughs> that's down know. to him. You know, yeah. that's that's creative genius. That only that's like art clips, artillery play. It's like on another level. <laughs> Compared to everyone else pretty much yeah. in the league and all of tanks currently. Uh, we are just waiting on the teams to get themselves prepared and sorted out and ready for this one. Going to the final round of our first map here between the two winners. And well, I think the teams are very close to being ready. They look fairly focused, if not just playing with their headsets for some reason. Um, but still, two to one currently in favor to school bus. I don't know what we can bring here. I, I think it's still going to be a close one, whichever way we look at this. We are live into it now on the attack. It will be Wusa on the defense. It's going to be school bus. Yeah, so two one at the moment in favor of school bus. They won one attacking round. Now this is where Wusa really has to start doing some damage. I said. I theorize that this would be a 2-2, and even if it is a 3-1, I think it would be decided on the second map. But Arclick getting up into that normal A1 position, which Nashorn from the RUNCIS WGL actually pioneered and used first. So successful, and he's really got a time limit, but because Wusar aren't in a position down south, it should just be about okay, and Armley is going to just join in to give him that extra boost. But so far, it hasn't worked out. I do remember, Schoolbus did actually say they do have new training partners, and they didn't specify who, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of those Russian teams have been part of these sparring partners, um, picking up tricks here and there, and maybe. Still, our clip going to be adjusting. Dangerously close shots coming through from Schnitzel. And now, where will our clip reposition to, do you Again, think you know, he, he actually failed uh, on, uh, against... Um, it was... It's Kazna. Yeah. It, 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 he failed against Kazna on the second time and they were defending. Hit once and then. Yeah, I mean, right. like it's a big deal that he can't get in there. But you can see Wooster's not really towards that left cap, that number one cap. So let's see if it actually does make a big difference. But I think it will. Um, he might just try and scamper across the A5 area. To be honest, the FE is tiny and is also unbelievably quick. So as long as um, one of his IS3's peaks first, make sure there's nothing there. He should just be, able, be just about be able to get away with it. But yeah. um, there's not really that much point at the end of the day. So T37 rotating around south. Um, Siege playing that one. So they are going to try and get to that F2 area because um, maybe they guessed that uh, Arklet couldn't get into that uh, B2 area. Well, he didn't do it first round, so maybe they're just assuming he didn't try it. I don't know. It's it's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, but um, Armley is going to be able to get one shot at least against him if he does hit it, and Armley's pretty good at hitting shells. He's definitely probably one of the most, if not the most experienced player in that team, coming all the way from um, you know teams like uh, Red Gra and Red Team Three, and uh, you know he's been around the block for sure. As, as so is Arklet, and so are many of these players. But you see the 5100s in the middle. Um, Moose has been quite tentative. I mean, this is him also. Everything slows down a little bit. Yeah. But eventually, they are going to have to try and make that shell. And you can see Arklet is guessed correctly, and it has crossed over to A5. Um, so, you know, it's actually going better for Wooster because they haven't received an, any initial damage. Um, so, I'm, I'm pretty confident at this point. Yeah. And Wooster starting to build up here. It seems as though they are on the right path to you, at least. Um, does it look as though they're kind of heading towards what you'd assume may equate to a win? I know it's still quite early in this one. Siege, once again, Arklick gets so close to landing these. He's just got plenty of time and um, yeah. plenty of options. He's got such a short reload that he can just make the shells wherever he wants. But Vitalin goes forwards. Dead Hunter this time doing a little bit better. Remember last time he just got, got caught, caught out, out tracked. Yeah. And then Amarak. So, you know, Dead Hunter really has to step it up this round. He certainly is against Vitalin first shell. But Vitalin's going to come off reload. Probably hit this next one. Arklet's continuing his barrage of the uh, F2, F1 area against Siege. But it's going a lot better for Wusa. They're in a better position. They can cap. And then as long as they can push through now and stop Arklet from making those shells, it should just be about okay. And, and if I was Siege, I would just be in the most unpredictable position or maybe even just the most predictable. <laughs> I'm not even sure how that works. I mean, that's just like, that just melts my brain. Well, let's see. Well, that was the previous position almost. 
And now Seish just has to pray to sweet Jesus that uh, the shell doesn't come in. Sadly, all he can do is wait. There's almost a double bluff to see if he'd move back in to make the shell. However, that comes in from Armley. And Seish gets punished there. Yeah, he does. But uh, 2 minutes and 30 seconds left. He can still get the cap on the way. To be honest, so as long as uh, Woos actually pushing in and do it successfully, it should just be okay. You can see Spike and FKK Shits and all the 5100s going around and catching out Annihilator. I don't know how they weren't aware of this. They tried it last time, but this time the Annihilator gets completely melted, taken down with doing so little in this one. And now Schnitzel starts really applying that pressure. Oh, there tries a cheeky shot. None of it is had by Schnitzel. Now Spoink in a 2v1 with Nuclear going to land those shells back to back. And it looks like Scorbus have been pretty much undone here. Down to 2.9k, make it 2.8. As Wusa sit on the comfortable 3.5, folding in towards Dead Hunter and Applewow in that northwest side. The T37 continuing the cap as it looks like it's going to be a clean sweep here against School Bus. One of the cleanest attacking rounds I've ever seen on him also. Fantastic work, and yeah. Seish is still capping. Armley is distracted with all the other tanks, and the might of Wooster is coming, slamming down against School Bus. Only Shanish, the two combat tanks left. Yeah, I don't think they can do much in this. I think they know that as well. Armley just realizing there's not much to do. He doesn't even have a shell to make until <laughs> right about now, really. And what can he do with it? find anything. Vatillion does take him down. Now, Shanish, last man alive. It looks as though you are correct with the 2-2 two -two scoreline prediction. Spoink and Shanish going backwards and forwards with these shells. And in the end of the day, one of them has a lot more backup than the other, and Shanish takes down Spoink, but that is it. 2-2 two -two two's the scoreline. Wusa bringing it back in this one. The tide all leave. Yeah, they got the mistakes in the first round sorted. They saw what they needed to do. They also guess what uh, School Bus would be doing, that they yeah. wouldn't be pushing all the way down the 1-2 area. And School Bus playing the same tactic twice clearly didn't work out for them, and it allowed Wooster to adapt. Um, I think, of course, the fact that they got Siege into the cap without receiving any damage. They saw that Stefan was um, kind of useless in that left side, so they put him with the main force. And having Stefan there basically gave him the hit points and the damage to actually push around against those IS-3s. And great work by um, FKK Schnitzel and Spoink to take down the Annihilators so, so quickly. Yeah, and I think this has been an event to really show the talent that we may not have always seen um, on the online phase, kind of shining a little more here. Spoink especially really stepping up quite impressively, even in the initial game we watched them in. It's a nice performance from him. But guys at the desk, what do you make of that first map? Well, I think I have to say it, I make it 50-50, actually. I, uh, I feel that uh, you are quite spot on, really. Uh, every time one gets an advantage, the very next time it's uh, quite the opposite. Wusa's second attack was uh, great. I think that's the only word I can say. Well, yeah, I suspect it to, to be a really close game, but I suspected that Wusa would take the defense because their defense rate was 90% and their attack rate was 20%. So they really improved their attacking now for the, for the offline finals. I believe Mojo was really surprised by that second attack. Oh no, I just saw that they done perfect attack that Kazna tried, but uh, didn't communicate well between each other. You could see here FKK flanking with that 50 perfectly to the second. They took all the heat on ice trees and they just came and swooped their team out. So they used that uh, 11 second reload uh, to, to come in and do their damage. I think those two 50s did six out of six shells each. And that's something that wins the game. There is no way out of that. Oh, that certainly is a, a way to win. Uh, what is the second map, actually? Uh, we're obviously switching maps now. We've actually had the four battles Cliff. on Himmelstorf. So we're going to Cliff. Yes. Uh, but the, the Himmelstorf battles, I think, as you said, were very confusing. Considering Wusa is meant to be great at defending, they didn't seem to be so confident today. They seemed to be a bit shaky. They did win one, but it was very close on both. As uh, Ollie was pointing out several times, it, it didn't seem so great. Uh, on the attack, on the other hand, the first battle looked pretty weak. And then the second one, very strong. I, I feel like I can't judge Wusa's abilities at all this uh, tournament so far. Well, just like Oli said, they, the first attack was that they just tasted the water, what they're going to do. And the next time, the school bus used the, exactly the same positions and was no, knew what to do. So it's pretty easy to work your way ar around the enemy when you know where they are from the last battle, if you use the same tactic twice. So it's, uh, well, in a way, it's school bus's fault for running the same tactic twice. Uh, you take careful look at the first attack, you can see that Wusa basically lost only because the ties 3 got crippled by RT on the rail. If they didn't have it there, that game would end the same like this. Because the only 
really standing tank from the school bus was the I-3 in the back. If uh, Busa had a chance to strike with all tanks, it would be this, like this. Right, so that's the end of Himmelsdorf. We're going to be moving on to Cliff soon. So what's the audience reaction been? I feel that if we're quite stunned with the way that the battles are going, I can only imagine what the crowd is feeling like. In it's still, the vote is closed now because after the first map, always um, the vote is, has been shut down since the start of the day and we're continuing that. So people, if you want to vo vote, make sure you get your votes in before the first map happened. And then as early as possible because we're re rewarding the first 10 people of the, day, uh, of the vote. And well, 76% for school bus still. And if we look closer on the actual predictions, let's see, um, three, five, five, three, four, five, five, three. So it's gonna be something very close as it seems. And they're pretty much right f for now. Well, Cliff is the next battle. And we're gonna find out whether or not the, uh, the, these will be right, considering it's 2-2 right now. I feel like most of the crowd got it pretty spot on. So let's find out what's going to happen on Cliff with School Bus versus Woosa. Over to you guys, Lauren and Ollie. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I do love the way you know we ask you, you know, what do you make of the map? 50-50. Very nice. Very yeah. <laughs> nice for a draw. I like that. I like that a lot. It's great. Um, <laughs> Cliff, though, going up next, what do you make of that map? 50-50? Um, yeah, 50-50. No, not 50-50. Right? This is not Himmelsdorf. So <laughs> I think um, for Cliff, I mean, the great thing, the weird thing, I guess, is about Cliff is the fact that despite mm. um, school bus literally losing everything on Cliff all the time, they've got like 40% win ratio on attack and defence, <laughs> they seem to play it a lot. They do. They, it, 25 times they played it this, maybe. This, this season. Maybe all the other teams have just picked the map because they knew they can beat School Bus on it. Maybe. But I think School Bus has got this kind of like historical pride on the map after beating Verts Pro, for instance, on it. Yep. That they kind of just keep on going backwards and forwards. It plays to their kind of player skill. But theoretically, Woos has got the better track record. They also did well against um, Penta, where they won both times on defense against them. So, you know, I have to say it. I think Woos has got a really good chance of winning on Cliff. We say, well, you say often it's about gambling and making sure you pick the right choice with the best odds, but this time it seems that, well, Usa like the uh, Western push and school bus keeping it standard, very uh, un CIS style. We saw them kind of adapting not too long ago. However, it will be Ooh, woo. fail. Massive fail. <laughs> massive, massive oh, fail. Oh, schnitzel, buddy. That is, a, that is a... Now he's out of position massively. That's basically Wooza just lost that middle section straight away look, because of schnitzel. they're all having to back away, literally. I mean, I get it. Like, you, you see a lot of um, people get hit there yep. when they go onto the cross, but the thing is they receive that one shell because they don't want to slip down. They want to make sure they actually get onto the cliff. And, you know, guys, we're seeing a masterclass in how not to drive in World of Tanks, and schnitzel is clearly the the guy to give us that instruction. But Schnitzel heading back down around, he's not going to have a second go at that. <laughs> and he's just going to be joining he's the rest of his team in enough e today. He doesn't need he is, For a guy that is like the best player from um, Wusa, Wusa it's, it's not going well for him. Uh, and, and you know that he was praying to God that no one was watching him at that exact moment. You know what Wusa I mean? Wusa has a weird thing on cliffs. Is that one? Didn't they let me off both, the cliff? Yeah, they've, they've lost two tanks from a cliff and <laughs> Schnitzel's just going to continue that reign. It's going to be even more kind of worrying when they probably beat School Bus on it and they still can't drive. You know, it's, it's always an impressive thing to be able to do that. Woosa just annihilated School Bus. I mean, they actually did play against them yeah. when Woosa won 5-4. Um, it was actually 3-1 in favor of Woosa when they went to the next <coughs> map. And that's because Woosa won twice on defense. Mm. They won one attacking round. So if that kind of follows the trend, it's going to go Woosa's way. And that's why I say it. But um, it's it's a different it's a different day, and that was like in match day three or something. So it was a long Very time ago. Very different teams to what we're seeing now. I feel they've they've adapted so much since then. And Dead Hunter there spots out Siege. Siege taking a lot of damage already, but Dead Hunter just kind of holding the position more than doing any damage there. Just kind of playing quite smartly and holding off the flank towards the eastern side. However, what's the end game plan here for Wusa? Because we often see these teams kind of having. You know, the early game, the mid game, and then maybe late. Is, is there anything you see early on from these guys that may 
indicate anything, or is this quite the generic start for? Well, they're using exactly the same tactic they use against um, Penta, where they use the T-54 and the M-41 to try and catch out anything in A5, A6. Mm. But you can also see they're doing the exact same thing around that middle area. They've got all their tanks on the south side, which means that they're going to push through up and towards the middle, but from the south and not do a Penta and push from the north and get, you know, cross shots here, there and everywhere. So that's my prediction, but you can see School Bus has a lot of tanks there. Penta just had Fluky, so they basically got a free tank as well as the Killzor. And School Bus are making the mistakes, that that mistake, despite Schnitzel making some good shots. But here we go, Wusa is going to have a crack at it. Let's see what they make of this two shots very early on, coming out from Nuclear there, and I believe Shanish towards Rufi. So good focus fire, the Annihilator gets one as well, but it looks as though the attack will continue and they might make it to the doorstep of School Bus. Rufi there, now more fire comes in from the Annihilator on the hill. Stefan maybe overextending a little on towards his own, gets 700 damage dealt. Rufi down to near on a one shot. This could go very badly wrong, very fast for Wusa here, taking a lot more than maybe they'd expect, but Shanish now caught out on his own as well. Maybe basing himself out, hoping they'll commit for it, allow a crossfire to come in and they do take him down, but will School Bus find anything back for it? Wusa down so low on HP, but the guns are still in the game to a degree. But at this point, it looks as though School Bus on the verge of picking up round one here. Well, Armin on making two. a little bit of a mistake though, overextending. He's got two shells left in that AMX 3090, but Siege coming on reload. It's three versus three. The hit points just about in favor of School Bus, thanks to Apwau and the Annihilator. But uh, Schnitzel having a go at Arkley. Arkley <laughs> does find him. He actually bounced that first shell. Obviously, the penetration not great on the M41, and Applewell should find near Pazorni. It's obviously on reload that MX-1390. will be Annihilator, leaving just Team Captain Sheesh left in the M41. And there's been great work coming out from the Annihilator throughout this one. On top of the hill, I believe, supporting fire has been primed from him. And Sheesh just waiting his fate pretty much here. One shell, maybe two more to finish us off. As Applewell will finish it off in style, and School Bus picked up now at a 3-2. Kicking off map number two with a good starting round. But then Wusa should have won that because of the mis um, if they actually had Schnitzel in that position. It was because Schnitzel screwed up that Wusa lost that round. They lost their complete yes. advantage. It allows School Bus to basically sit all their tanks up in that southern part of the middle area. And that basically when Wusa pushed around, they did so much damage to Wusa crossing through the middle about one, one and a half K, that despite some great play by Wusa in the middle, they just simply didn't have the mass to support themselves through a win. So, again, FKK Schnitzel loses them around. Is it, he seems such a, such a polar player at times. Either he wins in the game or loses them the game. It does seem like a hit and miss thing sometimes. But, you know, that's, that's how, it, how it works. But it does get score was a 3-2 to two score line. But that doesn't even seem like this that much at this point between these two. So even in the way they're playing. And let's assume... They'd, would, would they do the same thing again? Just assume that Schnitzel will make it to that same spot? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it, it was so unbelievably bad that... Um, <laughs> I don't know if... I feel, so, I, I feel really bad mistake? for Wusa because they would have... With that tactic, they would have literally won that round if that happened again. But it's also put them in a bad situation tactically because of those options now yeah. you've highlighted. Do they go for that thing again and hope that they win? Or do they try something new? You know, it's put the spanner in the works a lot, and uh, clearly School Bus is going to be happy with that. They're going to use that confidence going forwards, and Wooster might have just lost a, a bit of confidence in this map because of that mistake. But um, we have to see. If I was Wooster, I would probably just go for an all-in in the middle. Um, they are attacking, and uh, hope that they kind of catch School Bus by surprise. Um, yeah. I'm also surprised that Annihilator did as good as he did on the hill because... You know, the hill's great, but you don't have the gun depression to be able to deal with tanks right below it. So it was because the M41s were far away and because Schnitzel went off after um, Deadhunter that allowed him to do a lot of damage. So you just need to get closer, need to get some close quarter shots. And I think Wooster should also pick up a T49 if they do go into the middle um, and just see how it works with that kind of strategy. School boss looking ready. There's Applewell on your screen. It's a man known for how phenomenal he can play as an individual. Brilliant talent for such a young player. Didn't really have a big game in that last map, but still, under those pressure situations, you love having him in your team. That's basically how it works. But Spoink for uh, Wusa there. Another player who surprised me this time, another young uh, player to the scene who's done brilliantly so far for Wusa. His accuracy was second to none the first time we saw Cliff around, hitting around 100% of his shots, which was actually phenomenal. Um, See if he can do it again. That's the big question here. 
they need it really considering that first round was quite the diabolical affair and as you said one player can be a problem but you've got to be able to kind of deal with it as a collective and hopefully they can overcome that problem of the first way away. But guys, on Twitter, once again, get involved. Hashtag WGLEU. Let us know your thoughts. Or tweet to myself, at they call me pansy, or laughter, W-O-T, with your thoughts on this matchup. While they wait, what are your predictions on how this one's going to turn out? Will it be a landslide victory on Cliff for School Bus? Or will Woosa finally start kind of sliding down the cliffs and get back into the game? Your prediction, if, you'd, if I can push you for maybe an ending scoreline? Um... It's hard. I, it it might be even a tiebreaker, but okay. I think School Bus is just doing better. But it, it's so almost like mirrored of the online phase. They, <laughs> they're getting lucky in, these few, in a few situations, and that's certainly helping them through these rounds. But, you know, I, I think S. Schnitzel's got to step himself up. I mean, Schpoink is showing him how it's done. You know, Schpoink's the guy that had to f basically fight his way into the team. He wasn't really there at the beginning of the season. Yeah. He comes from Vea Victor, so he's got a little bit of experience, but he's just stepped up and, uh, well, he's showing the old dog some new tricks. Uh, he's going to be playing right next to his compatriot there to his left. So initial damage going across. My prediction of them going into the middle is correct. You've got the Bulldog coming down from the south. So we're still showing us something they haven't done yet. Um, and they're just playing in the middle. Tank lineups uh, don't support any kind of burst play. They haven't got the T49, nor has School Bus. And hmm. that's kind of surprising. The it's T49 is trend, isn't it? It's just going out of favor again. There's T54 is clearly just too good hull down and now good, too good at doing damage for them to be ignored for a T-49. I feel it's almost a shame. I love the impact of that tank, especially on this map. It was always a bit of a game changer at times, but then again, if it's inconsistent, how useful is that for a team that needs consistency? It, it makes sense. However, this time around, the Annihilator's not going to be able to make it to the top of that hill so easily, I believe. I think he's already being held currently in place, so I'm not going to have such an easy time of it. Well, I don't think he had an easy time before, but you know what I mean. Now with 5 minutes and 22 seconds into this one, it looks like it's kind of teetering on a knife edge at moments. These two so close to each other, yet no one really wants that full engage. But Stefan does make it to the hill first. Stefan's got the hill. You can also see Dead Hunters up in A6, so he's going to be kind of in an awkward situation when it come, comes down to it. I think Stefan might be able to support, spot that AMX 3090 he does, and it, it's going all the way of Wusa. They've, they're doing what they want. They're poking, doing oh, great the damage to the Annihilator. This gets annihilated there down to a slither of hit, hit points, and uh, as I said, going all the way of Wusa. They're, po they're peaking, they're doing damage, they're punishing when School Bus overextends. School Bus may be a little bit cocky, a little bit overconfident from that first round, and they need to know why they won that rather than taking it for granted. Probably not quite having the accuracy of the first time we witnessed him, but still, he's doing the job he needed to. And sometimes you've got to make those blind shots, you've got to keep position, you've got to hold it down. The funny thing is that Vorsik actually lost the finals for the Virtus Pro against School Bus for that exact same mistake the Annihilator just made. Overextending, peaking, and then for, for just a shell, and then getting caught out all in one spot in a couple of milliseconds. So it's yeah. kind of ironic how that works back and forth between these two teams. Oh, it's such an easy mistake. But you can see the rotation from Wusa. They've got the hit point advantage. They got some good play by the M41s, and now they just want to force it through, make it work. They got Stefan up there to basically keep that AMX 1390 and that T54 in C8 locked down, and then they're just going to come around and take the rest out. This kind of worries me, though. I was quite nervous after the first time we got to watch Cliff. These it used to be the two 1390s splitting off around this side, but it looks like Apple and Armley will be trying to hold them off at least, or at least get a couple of shells in and maybe even the HP pull up because it's still in advantage of Wusa, not by a huge amount, but enough so far. And at the moment you can see Rufi, Schpoink and Schnitzel making it around towards the eastern side. And I'm wondering if Nuclear and that T-54 Lightweight will make a move towards the center of the map. I don't think it's just yet, but all of Wusa are spotted. Surely School Bus have a plan in mind here. At least I'd hope so. The problem is the Annihilator can't shoot, otherwise he's going to be spotted. And he is actually going to get spotted as a surprise if he lives through this one. Once he goes down, that's going to be the gun out of the game. Nuclear ones for Thailand, the M41. But you can see Sheesh immediately reacting to that, protecting his teammate. Stefan has to make something work on the hill. And the longer this engagement goes, the worse it is for Wusa, because the damage will come out from School Bus. And, uh, well, Rufi, Schnitzel, and Schwenk are kind of all out of ideas. They can't take down the Annihilator. They can't really do that much. But Shanish receiving another shell. And does Stefan oh, expect Nuclear to be up here? One versus one. I think uh, the 251 does have the advantage in terms of um, uh, DPM, and they are on pretty similar hit points. Certainly are. It may even come down to player skill or positional advantage that Stefan certainly has for now, at least. But uh, the 
the rest of the tanks for Wusa backing away from the eastern side. Uh, maybe just trying to test the waters, see where Skullbus are, and then go for a full move. Bearing in mind, Skullbus are on the defending side, so time is in their favour. The longer this goes on, the better for them, but we are seeing them making their way back round. The Bulldog is towards the north as well, and Nuclear looking for a way in. Nuclear just doesn't want to get shot by that Bulldog. That's a classic move. Mm. Stefan just getting the 50 meter proxy spot. Um, and then shooting Nuclear from the side, which has put Nuclear in a really awkward position. Nuclear can basically do nothing, and Stefan can do everything. And if Nuclear goes forwards, he's dead. If he goes backwards, he's useless for a few seconds. And he's useless here, as we do decide to move in. They need to make this one count. Schnitzel takes a lot, though. This isn't going so smoothly as maybe Wusu would have wanted, even though they are maintaining the advantage. Arklik could be in a predicament, but he does make the most of it. Taking down Schnitzel, Rufy then falls. Maybe not such a clean take here. Schpoink takes a little, but Arklit out on a limb. He is on his own here. One or two more shots may take him out of this one. Vatilian now has the shell, but it's Schpoink to land it. Cap has begun, but now Wusa starting to trail in HP, and I'm wondering what the hell's going wrong here. Oh, Dead Hunter does get tracked in the middle, but he does find Schpoink at least, and uh, Nuclear versus Stefan. Stefan oh, will have a reload have first. Shell. He has to try and hit the shell, but he oh, misses, misses it. it, and Nuclear with a skill takes him down. Two versus f uh, five at this point. And Schoolbus, great defensive work. Despite the advantage from Wusa, they've made it all work for them. And, well, I just don't see Wusa getting into this game again. Cap's on the way still, but surely Armley will take care of that. They're, they're so low, though, Schoolbus. Their HP is so low. Look at Nuclear, 34, the Annihilator to 41. San Shanish a little bit more, 157, but still, they're, they're quite low on HP. Cap has started near Pazoni and Siege left alive. And the roaming two with the HP going to focus on the Epizoni first. The experienced player of Wusa gets absolutely decimated on the way through. Shanish found Siege, and that's Skullbush just showing dominance there. It was just indecisiveness from Wusa. Good defensive play by Skullbush. And uh, just add those two together, and you've got a great win from Skullbush. I mean, Annihilator went very low, Stefan was on the hill. They had absolutely everything going for them. Then Wusa decided to flank around. Didn't do anything with that. Didn't take down the Annihilator. They knew if they pushed against um, the T-54 sitting there, it would have been game over, Armelie. Um And it's just mistakes. And the Nuclear managed to win against Stefan because of one shell hitting him was just absolutely great work. And uh, you can really depend on Nuclear to hit those shells and to be that individual player who just stands out and you know is consistently reliable. But you know, Wusa should have won that. They, they just had have. to make one decisive move. I mean, they should have pushed through the middle straight away and just taken down the Annihilator, mm. taken down Nuclear, and just dealt with it. But instead, they kind of just made loads of mistakes, couldn't think of what they wanted mm. to do. And it's that jitter when you're winning. You just don't push it forwards and, and just do that final exchange. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on this. They tried out something new, which is fine. There's nothing wrong without trying something new on, on these maps. But then that Eastern push that kind of didn't go anywhere, they rotated back around, they got the HP kind of whittled down, just shell after shell. I, I don't know what to make of it. Guys on the desk, what are your thoughts on the play there coming out from Wusa? Well, not this time 50-50. Uh, this time it was definitely 100-0. Uh, Wusa, not so great performance this time. I, I feel that there was a bit of discussion here uh, debating the pros and cons of certain things. And on the first map, uh, you actually disagreed a little bit with um, at Laughter about something uh, I think it was about Schnitzel's mistake. He says that it was that was that was it. That was the reason. But you say there's, there was another reason why. No, oh, he's dropping out. Did uh, lose in some spotting, but at the end it was the push they did it to bury them. I saw at one moment Ru push first in a sniping line. He took like 1k damage without even making a shot for no reason. Uh, Vusa, unlike on previous maps when they played the, with multiple 54s, lower the number here and have much softer tanks like Ruse, like two of them in a team. And I think in this situation, when they actually have to push, it costed them a lot. Uh, Skullbus is known as a team that really rejected 49 as much as they could in uh, Cliff games. So at some moment, you can say this kind of gameplay suits them and gives them some kind of advantage. You could see Nuclear in 54, that guy could survive a nu nuclear strike there, I think. <laughs> like, if tactical nuke would drop, he would still crawl out with like 10 HP. Well, they are the, the mini cockroaches, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wookie, you got a point on this? Yeah, I kind of disagree with Mojo a bit because when Snitchell dropped down from the position, he tried to go. He would have had a good hold-on position in there. Yes, he would 
the drop down lost the spot thing to the middle, but it also made it clear easy for school bus to get tanked to the hill, to the lighthouse area. And that was critical? Yeah, because after the boots uh, started pushing from the donut area, they got a really good crossfire from the donut, uh, from the lighthouse area, and then from the middle. So it's just you're pushing straight through from the donut into a pretty much killing shot. Yeah, well, that was Wusa on attack. Now, Cliff, they now have to defend it. And a lot of people were saying 5-3. Well, right now it's 4-2. It's well on the way to being that. Wusa needs to get the next battle or they are uh, down to the loser's bracket to go against Castle Crew. So let's find out exactly what happens and do they have what it takes to get the next battle. Over to you, Casters. Brilliant stuff from the desk there, just kind of talking through the maps there, a lot of discussion points, but at the end of the day, discussion points aside, we're now at 4-2, as said by Dorshan there. It's, it's, it's one more round for School Bus and they're through to day two, which is exactly what they need and exactly what they wanted from the start of today. Uh, perfect route for the previous champions as well, uh, what they would have wanted. However, for their opponent, it's starting to look like a long road back, and it needs to start right about now. So, teams are ready. We can start looking into this one, and once again, you can have a little look at the lineup, see what you make of it, and we'll get you in one moment. But in the south, in blue, on the attack this time, as pointed out, it is school bus four rounds beside them, and Wusa await. And what are we going to see? Finally, we see the gamble paying off. You got uh, an AMX 39 to go up north, and the T54 go down south. The Annihilator, though, is picking up that uh, T49. Mojo feels the curse of the casters, but it's going well for Wusa in the initial engagement. Oh, and Shanish getting melted down to nothing. Matillion picks up the first, but Spoink looks like he could be the reply. However, it's actually Rufy being found by the Annihilator, as already that tank comes into practice, but Armily the next on the chopping board. Back and forth we go, seeing it go down at a two-for-two two exchange so far, but Spoink and Rufy being taken out for Shanish and Armily. Applewell gets found. This is a sloppy battle to begin with, and the Annihilator throws Nuclear into the line den but look at that damage coming out it's huge oh but he doesn't actually penetrate and it doesn't take him down so it gives Wusa a fighting chance uh stefan though on such a little amount of hit points he oh, might just get one shot but yeah you can see the crossfire coming up but still school must have the higher ground which does make a big difference uh, dead, so, uh, dead Hunter can just shoot down against Siege, who's re reloading. The Annihilator, though, has to get close quarters. He wants to take down Stefan again. Doesn't penetrate, oh. and uh, well, 1.6k damage is a lot, but it would have been a lot more, and it probably would have been a win already for Schoolbus if he had. But again, it's all about that higher ground. The hit points are pretty even between the two teams, um, but... I just feel the positional play is so just better. It's unreal. Look at him. He's so confident to go for these shots. He took down Stefan then, but leering over the cliff edge. And so many possibilities in this one. Vatilian, Siege, and Schnitzel still alive here. It's Skorbas who know where they're at. They've spotted every one of them. Can they do the damage? The Annihilator looking for more. Can he find it? Looking over the cliff once again. Will he commit? He's going to try and find the angle. It's near on impossible. It's near on vertical, but he's looking for it desperately. It's Vatillion dodging around, trying to stay out of that kind of clutch. He's waiting for it. He's made the shot. Oh, Ooh. he's got another! The Annihilator playing out of his mind right now as it's a 3v2. Siege and Schnitzel. The last two standing. Unbelievable shots for the United. Just pixel shells with a T49 is not something you see every I'm day. I'm scared he's going to do it again. Um, Vitalian did everything he could. He maybe overstayed his welcome in that last shot, but he, he just needed 0.2 of a second. It would have been the Annihilator down instead of him. That's the kind of risks you've got to you take at the end of the day. Schnitzel, that's the problem. I mean, this is again the, the, the problem. Schnitzel is out of the game because of Dead Hunter's positioning. Um, what was it Dead Hunter? No, Nucleus positioning in that T54. He can't really do much. And that's causing all sorts of problems for Musa. And look at the Bulldog make his way around. Siege is so focused on the Annihilator that the Bulldog coming around from the north is pretty much might have a shot on this. Siege might back away in a second. Dead Hunter might just be able to come around in time to land this one. I'm not sure if he's just made it around the corner. And look at these two perfectly timing it together, peeking over. And there it comes. Dead Hunter claims it now. One man alive against three. I think he knows this might be the end of this one. And the Annihilator having a stunning game. 2.5k damage for one man alone waiting to make the shot. And he gets it. Four kills, 3.1k. And it's School Bus picking up the victory. Beautiful, beautiful game. What can I say? Annihilator just being on form. That's the best round we've ever seen from that man. 
And it does beg the question, why hasn't School Bus picked the T49 more on the cliff? And when they did pick it, it went so well. The Annihilator taking down four tanks, 3,125 damage. He hit Vitalin. He hit Nia Pazorni, he hit FKK Schnitzel, you know, that last shell, maybe not a big deal, but, you know, you can't really win when a, when a guy is playing that well. What can you do against that? Especially a player that, he's a great player, there's no taking away from that, but he wouldn't have been the one that I'd chalk up to be the heavy impact player, the player that would, you know, make that sort of damage, make those sort of plays. You'd maybe say Apple Wow or someone else to that sort of caliber who could step up, claim those massive shots, do that damage, but that... Is one way to get yourself certainly in a lineup in the offline finals looking very good coming into this season and really showing that he can play with these guys. They have come together as a very good team. But that school bus through to the second day now. School bus look like they're on form. They're doing exactly what they did in the season four finals. They're just making their way through um, the winner's bracket and they're looking yeah. so much better than they did in the online stage. It's yes. not even funny. Experience clearly coming into the equation, but still they got a lot of work ahead of them, but Wusa has more as they do drop down to that lower bracket. As we said, if Wusa fancy their chances in this and they want to go further, they have to fight all the way through. But still, Wusa aside, it's all about school bus right now, and Arkland's got to be happy with their performance. Mitch, how's it going on stage? Well, pretty darn good. I've got a very happy man right next to me, of course. Arklit from School Bus Triumphant after what was a very close game. The school may not have always depicted that scenario, but we here knew better. I mean, we had four, four games on Himmelsdorf. It was two and two. You both actually won an attacking round, interestingly enough. And then we saw Cliff. Now, this, is, this was really interesting because Wusa had to start attacking twice, right? They went for a really aggressive push didn't work out. They went for something a little bit slower, didn't work out. You guys look like you had the defense really solid. And then it was your turn to attack and they pushed you on the Western road. Now, did you expect that? I mean, they, they played a, a different strategy each and every time. Were you guys ready for this? Did you have to adapt? Do you think Russo would have been better off maybe playing the defensive side like you guys did? Well, uh, it was pretty obvious uh, how they're going to play because uh, after the first game on the cliff when they uh, attacked uh, from the lower side, uh, we knew that they won't risk it again and they will play, will maybe try push mid. So we just uh, took our chances and uh, tried to uh, take them in the middle, but it didn't work out, but we adjusted and stuff. Uh, but uh, we saw them pushing from defense on the uh, first line uh, before, so we were kind of ready for that, so, and uh, it worked for us. I mean, it was messy. Like, it definitely was close. There were a few moments there where it could have, definitely could have gone either way, but you guys obviously have made it through to day two. This is starting to look a little bit like season four. I clearly don't know. I don't want to jinx it for you, but it's a very, very good road for you guys so far. Now, look, what's next for you guys? What's the plan from here? Obviously, you've got to be thinking about who you're playing tomorrow. What's the general atmosphere and what's next? Well, uh, next is uh, GGWP, so we will be getting ready for them and... Uh, I must say that uh, Vusa are very, very strong. Uh, they, we really have a few, few headaches in the team. We are really trying hard. So uh, those guys will show their strength uh, tomorrow. I am sure of that. Well, I mean, they showed plenty of their strength today, but School Bus stronger on the day again. Congratulations, Arklit. Thanks for joining me on the stage. Of course, a round of applause. School Bus qualify for day two. Well, we just scraped the surface on what that game held for us now. We're going to pass to our experts. We're going to break it down into a little bit more, well, sizable chunks. Dorjan, let's hear it. Thank you, Mitch. I, the Annihilator's play at the end there, the way he had his tank, the new physics might not allow him to do that. I swear his tank was going to fall on its turret uh, at every moment there, but he squeezed every angle out of the tank. I, I couldn't begin to be able to play like that. However, give Wusa their due. Every player that was below got their shots off, was hiding really well. Just what could they have done? I, I personally think they shouldn't be right there when they were. Like, Snitchell was behind the rock at the one line. Why you are in, uh, on your own side of the map so that Snitchell cannot cover you? If you would be just one square to the west, you would be safe from the T49. It couldn't do anything. Okay, school bus could start the east cap. So well, then they would have one tank, at least one tank, from the tree in a capping circle. So there would be only two tanks. 
defending the donut area, and you you still have three tanks, so you could overpower the two tanks in the donut area with your three tanks. Numbers win. Yeah, uh, I, I see Mojo staring down. Is this like you're deep in thought? Uh, are you disagreeing with this? Well, the brawl started like a Star Wars scenario. <laughs> I think Lucas himself would be glad to see that. It was all around shootout. I just think Wusa maybe committed one tank too many down because at the end they had 13090 coming from the back of uh, Skulbas and Skulbas could represent to that. Now that an Alighter guy, I'm going to start hating him because that's exactly what he did to us in the last game oh. and <laughs> he's actually very good at it. He read what is Wusa doing really well and when once he saw it he clung to it like a vampire and he didn't let go. He didn't let go. He did not let go. So now we know what the battles ahead will be. We do have School Bus versus GGWP tomorrow, but the last battle of today is unfortunately for Wusa, them versus Kazna Crew. So we're going to see Kazna Crew again, and after a short break, Wusa will be back on stage to see if they can keep it up. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.